So let's learn a few things about friction. We've already talked a little bit about it. You know that the symbol is FF. Big F for force, little f for friction. But what does friction do? Because a lot of people think that friction tries to stop things from moving, and that's not really true. If you're gonna get friction right, if you're gonna draw it properly on free body diagrams, you have to understand its, its motivation. And what friction really wants above all things is things not to slip. It's trying to fight not motion, but it's trying to fight slippage. It doesn't want anything to be slipping or sliding or skidding. So it will stop you from moving if you're sliding across the floor, but if you're trying to walk, it will actually help you walk. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. What we want to learn today is what it depends on. How do I make friction bigger and how do I make it smaller? One thing people often say when I say what does it depend on, people will shout out the weight of the object. But that's not actually true. Let me show you what I mean but it's gonna be hard without the camera boy over here to do his job. Here I have some garbage book and I'm pulling it with a spring scale and you can see that to pull it, I've gotta match friction and that's about three newtons of force. Now, you might think that the weight matters. If I put a second garbage book on it, I'm not gonna to be too surprised that the friction is about Six. It's about double, so more and what do you mean? It is double, but it's not about the weight of the book. As you can see, what if I just push down? The weight of the book hasn't changed, but it takes me 16 newtons this time because I'm pushing down. So what is actually going on here? It doesn't depend on the weight of the book, but it does depend on how hard the desk is pushing up on the book. And of course, that's called the normal force. So we should do some physics. We can take measurements. And if we did, we would discover that the force of friction is directly proportional to Fn. I haven't proved it, but it is true. That's what physics is all about. We do experiments. We see that if I double Fn, the friction doubles. If I triple Fn, the friction triples. So what's the second thing? Hopefully a lot of you know in math that if friction is proportional to Fn, then it's got to be equal to something times Fn. And that would be, of course, the slope of the Ff times Fn graph if I did an experiment. It's called the coefficient of friction, and the letter that we use is mu. So mu, this Greek letter, stands for the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction, because it is the coefficient that allows you to calculate friction. But what does it actually mean? What does it represent in real life? And I don't think that's too complicated to understand. It has to do with how smooth or how rough the two surfaces are. So two rough surfaces are going to have a high coefficient of friction. It's going to be a lot of friction between two rough surfaces. But two smooth surfaces like steel on ice is going to have a pretty low coefficient of friction. So that's the second thing that friction depends on. Basically, it's the smoothness of each surface. My one book does not have a coefficient of friction. There's no such thing as mu for the book, but there is a mu for the book and the desk. There's a different mu for the book and the floor. So the smoothness of each surface and that is mu.